babies, it's that time again. Oh, yeah. I tried Genesis, but I couldn't go there. I mean, Exodus. The, uh, the killing of the firstborn is just too much for me. <clears throat> and the troubling thing about that is it fits nicely in, you know, Jesus' sacrifice, but... <laughs> just don't see it. I don't see God requiring firstborn killings after hardening Pharaoh's heart himself. <laughs> I just don't see it, baby. So I had to go to uh, the Aquarian Gospel. Well, I didn't have to, but I chose to. I forgot the chapter. I'm in the hundreds at this point. But it's a familiar story. It's, it's taken from uh, the traditional Gospels of the woman um, wiping Jesus' feet with her hair after she's crying with thanksgiving over his ascendant nature. Because she had experienced the power of his forgiveness, whereas the rest of the world wanted to condemn her because of her um, behavior. And then people are all aghast at that. Well, if he really was a prophet, he'd know this person was a prostitute, blah, blah, blah. And Jesus is like, she's done more than you. You didn't show me any particular honor and she's honoring me. So <laughs> there you have it. God using the simple things in the world to confound the wise. And that's where we find ourselves. Oh yeah, baby. We are forever going to be in this position, honoring Jesus in simple ways, people slandering us because of some behavior they object to totally overlooking our hearts which really only God can really see but they're not even trying to look there and that's just going to be the way it is from here on out <laughs> so better get used to it Papa. oh yeah so one thing that comes to mind is, you know, the other day I was, I was just overwhelmed with Thanksgiving as I was getting out of my vehicle. I was kind of like in, in a public place, but I just felt like I just want to raise my hands and thank God for the beauty in which I find myself. And why? And when I did, the neighbor who lives above me drove right by and normally she waves and says hi but she didn't <laughs> she probably was like oh my god what is this the gay guy is raising his hands in public that can't be possible because we all know gays are going to hell what's he doing he's not forgiven by god <laughs> oh Oh yeah, baby, just like that. So little things like that. So what I'm saying is, you know, we don't, you don't have to go out 
looking to be <laughs> ostracized for your faith, it's just going to come natural because you're going to want to demonstrate your thanksgiving to the Lord in a way that you can't really resist because that's the natural um, movement of your expression. And of course, there are going to be people who are not going to understand that because these things cannot be understood in the natural mind. And we just need to be strong to just be who we are and not be fearful of criticism and then fail to give God his due glory. Oh yeah, baby, just like that. Oh yeah, baby, just like that. <laughs> just like that. So again, we're back to the paradox. I need to keep reminding you of that because some of you, I think, are failing to get the true gist of the power of the paradox and how essential it is in understanding who God is and how crucial it is to honor and understand and embrace because without it, you're going to find yourself locked into that mindset of Jesus's critics who only see things one way. That's why we have all the divisions that we do. Whether they're in the church or in society. I'm not like that. They're not like me. I'm good. They're bad. I can't talk to them. They don't know God the way I do. They don't even know God. I can't talk to them. When God is just looking for us to be loving. He didn't say only love those who think like you. But yet you would think that because that's kind of how we live. If you look at it, you look at people of faith. You look at, it, at people um, who don't have any faith. And you look at a common attribute, I shouldn't say attribute, a common characteristic in all of their lives that is limiting their positive effect on society. And it's this mindset, the mindset that does not grasp the power of paradox, the mindset that has to be dualistic. Yeah, baby. That's where the power is, honey. So you thank God for that. And you immerse yourself in his mindset. And you let his spirit and his heart transform the world because it cannot resist the cleansing fire of God in you. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. It's just like that. 